to start from the beginning. You're listening to Real Talk True Stories. The freshest podcast bring you nothing but real talk and true stories from your favorite personalities, entrepreneurs. This is an entertainment podcast. Education, entertainment. Yo, yo. It's a Real Talk True Stories podcast. Um, and right now we're in New York. Yeah. We're none other than arsonist. Yeah. The heat makers. Yeah, man. What's good, my brother? I'm good, man. Appreciate you having me, man. It's all good, you man. I mean, I know you're busy, so I appreciate your time and shit. But um, obviously, we wanted to chop it up with some of. Um, Silence this. Yeah, that's cool, bro. Okay. I think that's real talk true stories, man. Do what the fuck <laughs> you want, bro. So it's one of those ones where we wanted to come and like chop it up with you, bro. Yeah. Um, me being a fan. First and foremost, it, of, of your work, you know what I'm saying? Probably probably pretty much all of it as well, not right. even just pieces, like right. the whole thing, you know what I mean? Um, and really just to like go over some of that hip hop history, man. Because I, I, like, I feel like you guys might be um, a bigger part of that New York history than some people even remember, bro. And people give us credit for. Yeah, they yeah both. I'm sure, they, I'm sure you, you get a lot of credit. You but cannot re- not remember. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You know I what mean, I mean? Off, off, the, off the microphone, we didn't have it recording, but mm-hmm. it's a good place for us to start. You was talking about, like, you had down there had um, f- thousands of people hit you up saying that you basically raised them, you know what I mean? In terms right. of high school, right. trying to be a rapper, rapping over the beats and whatnot. Right. I mean, how, how often did you hear that, bro? I hear that a lot, especially with, like, Instagram and just social media in general. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people hit me up all the time, like, yo, it's because of you where I bought my first beat machine or... In high school, I listened to his heat makers instrumentals. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You're the reason why I started rapping, or you know what I'm saying? So I just think that's a blessing, man. Like to me, if, yeah, if all else fails, that's still there. You know what I'm saying? Like, Legacy. Yeah, that love is always gonna be there because you can't. Those memories stay with you forever. Like I remember what I listened to in high school. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. so. That's your that's your moment. Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm years removed from high school, so that memory never leaves you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That feeling never leaves you. And not only just the memory of individuals, which obviously that is the best thing because people buy into into music, you know what I'm saying, right. as an individual, but just having a stamp on the actual game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Rather than just people's and memories. And you don't see it once when it's happening. It's like years later that it was when a people, people will reach out to me and just be like, yo, man, like from this year to this year, it was like, y'all had it on smash. smash. But you don't see it like that when you're working. You're just working. You're not worried about staying relevant when you're working. You're just working, and you just. That's why you're relevant, be, right? Yeah, that's exactly. why you're relevant. You know you're putting in the hours. Exactly. I mean, are you are you guys kind of aware of how big you guys got in London as well? No, I was never aware. I never been to London. Wow. Never been to London. I mean, like, in in a nutshell, London's almost like a smaller version of New York. And when I say smaller, I don't mean that much smaller. I know what you mean. mean. Yeah. And um, there was a time period in London where, like, even my whole hood was wearing purple because of Dipset. <laughs> Like real shit, bro. Like That's like crazy. that. You know, like some real street shit. That's it it, it kind of. I feel like even Dipset, maybe even more. They were more influential on, on London than G Unit was. Oh yeah, because there you know was like a Dipset London with um, or Dipset Euro, something like that. I forgot. Dipset Euro, yeah, yeah. I forgot SAS, what it was. Yeah, SAS, yeah, SAS. yeah. Mega Mayhem, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't even just that. Like they're dope. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it was more about. That London but is a, the culture. London's a flashy fly place, bro. And like a lot of parts Harlem. of London. Yeah, this is so what London I'm saying. London is Harlem. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> this is what. Yo, you just took the words out of my mouth. There's actually places in London where they, they were calling it Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Because of that. Crazy. Real talk, bro. You can, you'll see it online and shit. You know what's crazy? I tell people all the time. If social media was as big as it is now, we'd have seen some shit, bro. Do you know how much extra money I would have made? Because <laughs> I couldn't get to the people in, in, in Europe. <laughs> I couldn't get to the people in Asia. It was kind of like, limited. There was MySpace, but people were using MySpace for all the wrong reasons. You know what I'm saying? Sure. At least now with Instagram, don't get me wrong, people do use Instagram for a lot of the wrong reasons. But <laughs> even now, people understand the business side of it. How can they can reach out to artists that they, they would have never had access to before? Yeah, yeah that's and true. I, you that's know true. what I mean? And I think now because, you know, obviously we're in a time of music where it's not necessarily like hip hop hip hop based you know now mm. it's like trap music it's, um, it's more more than the more than the music basically right you the know what fashion, i mean it's swag, the, right and yeah that, i mean it's always kind of been like that you know what i'm saying fashion and hip hop has always been synonymous yeah. in 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 most eras of hip hop you know what i'm saying hand. from run dmc with the but with you could the, be you could be a white rapper toes. right now as long as you got so, a, a good image you could might get you might get a, a shot you know what i'm saying there's the question what's a whack rapper yeah that's true too you know what i mean because yeah. at the end of the day there's so many different genres of rap that what i think makes this rapper whack 
might be the very reason why you love him yeah, or that's her. Real talk. That's true stories, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nah, so, for real. Because, it, you know, you get a lot of people that, that come for a vibe rather than the content. Right, exactly. Like, a lot of the music now is about vibe. Yeah. Music now is not really about lyrical content. Like, let's be real with each other. If I was listening to music for lyrical content at this point in my really life, like, period, yeah. I would have to search so hard to really find more than five artists that I can listen to. Nah, that's real shit. I always feel like it's a vibes man thing right now. Like, people are just catching on to the wave. Right. If someone's got that, that crazy hook when their tone sounds good, even if you can't hear every word they're saying, people but be loving we, that we shit. We program people to, to, to listen to music this way. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's kind of like, if all you've eaten your whole life is, <laughs> is, is chicken, fried chicken from Kennedy's Fried Chicken, and now somebody <laughs> takes you to a top-notch restaurant, you might think that chicken tastes funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Because your, your palate has already been set for this taste already, and yeah, that's what music is. There. It's, it's like... Kids growing up now, you know what I'm saying? Kids growing up now, they listen to certain types of music. You can't blame them for liking it because when we was growing up, or when I was growing up, I can't mm. speak for everybody. When I was growing up <laughs> and I was listening to like Biggie, I was listening to Wu Tang or whatever, after, you know, because originally I was listening to a lot of regular yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after that, when I'm listening to like Biggie and Wu Tang, my parents are looking at me like, this ain't, this ain't like music. what is this? They used to like, you know, they Jamaican obviously used to like Barris Hammond and, and Garnet Silk and, yeah, and whether it was Luther Vandross or, or, you know what I mean? They was used to that type like of music. Man music so hip hop to them was like, yo, what is this noise, noise. that I'm listening yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, real talk. So again, you got to look at this we, generation we as, the as if they was us. Music, you know what I'm saying? There's right. Like a whole, whole new genre of music and right. people look at it like it's a bunch of it's noise. Like, it's like EDM. For yeah. people that don't know any better, EDM might just sound like a bunch of different weird sounds and every, every four <laughs> bars the shit is changing, but the shit is music. Yeah, like they, we was in La Marina yesterday. They was playing some weird shit like that, bro. And me and my guy, yeah, see, that's, that's we could have really vibe to it, bro. That's what's so crazy. It's now music is separated into so many different genres now. Hip hop has about five different genres. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Sub genres. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so right. it's kind of yeah, like right. you really have to stand out at what you do, like and to the max. Yeah, because even if you think this record might be crazy mm. sounding. They're mastering whatever it is that people like that we might not understand. They've mastered that. Yeah, don't be close minded to it. Right. So it's like, you might it. not like it, but it makes money. No, nah, that's true. So bro. people, somebody likes the shit. We've seen, we've seen hip, you know what? We've seen hip hop elevate and go into different uh, different directions stemming from yeah, one I wouldn't, place. I wouldn't even say hip hop is elevating now because I don't want to give people too no. much credit. Mm. But I would say, I would say. Direction change, we, Yeah, we've seen hip hop metamorphosize you know what I'm saying like from one to the next to the next but never uh, elevating with I like that I like that no. yeah. I can respect that you know what I mean I could, nah, cause yeah cause you, it's, it's arguable that hip hop's better now yeah, you people could say that it was yeah, better before that, you know what I mean any era can argue that yeah. you know what I'm saying like I'm sure the era Subject of Rakim opinion. can argue that the era of Biggie wasn't as good yeah, yeah, and, yeah you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah, the, the, so it just it depends so when so when you guys um I always remember I used to buy the, the, the bootleg smack DVDs from, mm -hmm. from the market and shit because in London it would be an import so it'd be expensive and there'd be very limited copies. <laughs> what were they charging for that in London? The real shit. If you were buying the real shit, I think, I don't even know if the real shit ever made it. I ain't gonna lie to you. The real shit probably made it, it but might have made limited it in limited copies. stores, yeah. It probably would have been like smack $30, bro. Maybe, God, maybe more. Because over here it's probably 10 yeah, over So here, they're probably yeah, charging the here, tax to import. Was, God, I, was saying to, I was saying to P uh, Pierce on the way up, Pierce and <laughs> up, like person I was in the building and he, he, me and him was chopping it up. I've known him for like seven years and he made um, two of the joints on Killer Season. Yeah. And um, we make change and love my life. And I was telling him, yo, bro, I paid like 20 pounds for that, that album because it was an import. <laughs> 20 pounds is like $30, bro. Yeah. I paid like $30 for Killer Season because he wasn't signed to a major label at that point, so it was an import yeah, and it he cost was with, more. Um, he was with Asylum. Asylum and Koch, like a, a link up kind yeah, of thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I remember that time. I think I had a record on there, mm. IBS. Yeah, hard. I did record, hard. I think. I don't even remember the fucking record, but I think I had a record on there. <laughs> so that, that for me was like a, a good example of how like, yo, Lon London, w London was up on that New York shit, you know what I'm saying? But for see, here's the thing too, if the internet was as heavy as it was, it been Smack would have known he could just ship a thousand that, to make some real bread. And then yeah. tell them, yo, instead of 30, give me a 20 a pop. Yeah, give me yeah, 15 yeah. a pop. Because I'm sure to make one of them joints, not the, you mean, not the, the bootleg this is take years ago, anyway. I'm sure that shit probably cost, at that time, I'm sure he did that shit probably by, probably about six, seven bucks at most, five, six, seven bucks, mm. with the covers and the, you know what I'm saying? By the time you get that many numbers pressed up, for sure. But, but the, thing, the thing is, at that time, Smack DVD, Kind of like, um, obviously everyone was aware of, of Dipset and then there was a time where you came on the Smack DVD. Right. 
And I remember that shit like it was yesterday, bro. You lot was in the Bronx or something. Yeah, that was my mother's yeah, basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you started outside. Yeah, we was outside. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And they cut the footage, but we had a lot more disrespectful footage. It's not what oh, I say, when shit. I say disrespectful, I mean like around that time. Riding we, out. You was getting some money, so like we was showing them all the cars. And, oh, for real. Yeah, like we had like. Stunning on them. I was like, yo, we was playing ghetto blackjack. We got three sevens out here. Like we had my man seven, Thriller had a seven. Yeah. My, um, I, and I think my father had a seven parked out there. Then I had this, I had the, um, like, like a, a white Benz at the time. It was crazy. You know, just doing time. some shit. But he, he cut that footage. It was good. Thank God he cut that too, because people do try to kill us out there. <laughs> I'm happy he cut that. But hey, yeah, gonna come out of the woodwork. We was one of the first ones to make a beat on camera live. Like think back and tell right. me who did so that. That's the next us. thing I was getting to, bro. That he shit was, was yeah, but that shit wasn't just like it wasn't like someone making a beat. Everybody it was epic, did that. Bro. Everybody did that after me though, man. Yeah. And I yeah, never yeah, get the credit yeah, yeah. for it. Nah, that's why. That's but what we're here for. That's what we're here for, bro. Document that. I think the reason we here is for nah, that. bro. We're <laughs> that, we here for that, bro. Because yeah. my in my opinion, bro, that was a game. And I don't want it to come across as shit talking, but again, like we were saying, facts, like the artist we was talking about before. I'm not gonna say their name, but the artist we was talking about before that kind of brags about the stuff that he does. It has you kind of have to do that for people to record. It's weird. It's like even if that's not your personality, yeah. you have to remind people like, yo, let's let's not forget. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before yeah, yeah. this, nobody did this. That's true, bro. You understand? No, I'm trying to tell that's you. And only haters are gonna look at you and say, ah, this nigga bragging. No, if it's a fact, how are you bragging? Yeah, it's not like but, it's some right, thin air bullshit. You know what I'm saying? When Floyd says he's the best boxer and he's nobody's ever beat him, how is that bragging? That's a fact. It's a, that's a fact. That we can fact. we can go back and look at footage. He's beat everybody he's fought. He's the best. That's what the best means. Nobody's better until somebody beats him. I think him. we live in a world where people um people hate hate cocky. Oh, no, excuse me, fifty and all. I forgot. Yeah, fifty yeah, and all. Yeah. yeah, well, it's forty nine or fifty. Yeah, yeah. 50, <laughs> no, 50, 50, 50. <laughs> we gotta give him fifty because if he lost, they're gonna say he lost one. So exactly. You gotta give him that. Exactly. But I, I, my whole thing is like in this day and age, bro. Not even in this day and age in the world we live in. People love to hate anyway, bro. They probably love to hate more than they love to love. So it's you know, jealousy, give them some, give, give them something to hate on, bro. Not, it's not even really hate. It's jealousy because people want whatever it is that they're hating on. Indirectly, they wish it was them. Absolutely, but they bro. just don't know how Absolutely. to say it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like instead of me saying it and giving you the credit that you're supposed to get. Fuck you! I'm just gonna. Just gonna yeah, that's real talk, bro. You understand? Like it's like when it's like when dudes see a guy with a bitch that they wish they had, bro. Of course. They, they, yo, they're gonna hate because it ain't them. That's it. It's a simple thing, bro. It's not much more than that. But when you, but when you set pace on that DVD, bro, it wasn't regular, bro. It was some real. You went in on the NPC, yeah, bro. Always asking, but I never sold that beat. I never tried to. I just made it for smack. You, you know, but you know what happened? Like, like this is the thing. People so, rapped over that. Yeah, this was the same. They took sound bites. Yo, that beat was the most copied, ripped, remade. Like people try to remake it. People try to take the sound bite off of smack. Take the little four bar clip and loop it. Like, have you, heard, nasty, have you heard bro. of LimeWire? Yeah. All right, so well, like, I was the first time I listen, heard beats <laughs> that I put out that I didn't even know how niggas got them. Like, how bro, did you get this beat? LimeWire had so LimeWire was this whole thing where I could go on there and I would search the heat makers instead of Dipset, bro. Right. Or Diplomax instrumentals. Right. This is how sh- how ill it was, bro. So that shit used to pop up, yeah, and it was, was a, it was a it was a a rip of the DVD audio. It was one of the most. If, that was, stream- it, bro. if that was streaming back then, do you know how much? Listen, you might be platinum, bro. It might be platinum. Let's, let's, let's put it out there he That might be a platinum some hit Some of the most Downloaded beats Around LimeWire time yeah. Out of any producer Bro the whole dips The whole Dipset and, and Heatmakers thing Went hand in hand bro It's like yeah We love Dipset Because they were You know They were flossy Shining They were fly And nobody they was were, making beats With those type of swings on it But it was the time. beats That really Kind of yeah. it, it went. I, don't, I personally feel like maybe there would have been a dip set and they would have been big because Cameron was Cameron. But I feel like yeah, heat like, makers molded the sound with them. Thing. Though. I, Straight I up. would never tell somebody that without me, dip set doesn't work. That sounds stupid. Cam was already Cam. Cam, Cam was, was already Cam. popping. You know what I'm saying? Joel's was already talented. Jim would have eventually started rapping anyway. What I will say. What I will say though. The, the, the sound match perfect together Like I, I don't think I could have given those beats To any other artist yeah. And them pull it off The way that Dipset Pulled it like off yeah. Because they had the style And the swag To pull it off You know what I'm saying And mm. it was just perfect man Like That's like a marriage bro Right it was perfect Musically that shit I don't think You know what I mean Certain people make great matches Like Swiss and Rough Riders Like yeah, yeah, Like, like, Swiss like and Timbaland and Missy You know what I'm saying And like, like to me, just Blaze and Jay Z, or or, yeah, or yeah, Ski yeah. and Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I think Heat Makers and Dipset was a perfect sound, or is a perfect sound. I, I mean, it was so perfect, and this is gonna sound crazy. I don't know if you ever heard this before, but it was so perfect that as a really a really big Dipset 
follower fan, whatever you want to call it, or someone that loved Dipset music, where if Heat Makers wasn't on the project, I was upset, bro. <laughs> No, but that's, that's I was under, upset, bro. That's understandable <laughs> because people got mad at us when we did records with other people. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like people would be like, "Damn, you should have gave that beat to, to Cam." We no way. To, yeah, because people oh, they, to this day they still want to hear he made that moment Dipset again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they know that feel is unmatched. It's like yeah, our beats sound one way, Cam, Jim, Jewels, they rhyme one way, but together the shit is just a different type of feel. A whole different man. feel. It's a whole yeah, different yeah, yeah. feel. I mean, they, I mean, if you was to go back to um, the first ever time you met. A member of Dipset. Which, mm-hmm. Who was the original person that you met? The first person I met. How did was, the contact come? I, I met all three at the same time. Oh, for real? Yeah, because um, and I don't even know if they remember this, but they were in baseline at the time. But we were working with a guy named Renee McLean. We was trying to get some records placed, and he he used to place records. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, we chopped it up, and he was like, "What are y'all doing?" I said, "We, we produce." He mm-hmm. was like, "You got any beats?" And we gave, I gave him a CD. I, I didn't even know why I was giving him the CD for. I gave him the CD. It had like twenty beats on there. He was oh, like, "Yo." Loaded. Yeah, he said, yo, I managed Cam. Um, I'm going to play this for Cam. They were working on the album. Oh, wow. Played it for Cam. Out of those 20 beats, they took nine off of that CD and then put another That's a brilliant ratio, bro. Nine of them made Diplomatic Immunity and then the other two... It's going to be 50-50, man. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Damn near, bro. Yeah, and then the other two I did later on, I was Dipset Anthem and... um, I think it was the DJ No Freestyle. Talking about some classics right there, bro. I did later on. You know what I'm saying? But for the same album. So it was for Come Home With Me? No. No? It was for... Because Come Home With Me, what happened was another producer tried to take our credit for, for the, if you read the credits, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, we, the book, the we old, got the co-production shit. credit, but we did the beat. You understand what I'm trying Which to tell you? Which one was that? Boy Boy? Boy Boy and Come Home With Me. Yeah. Oh, and, and, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so, the, the head track of the right, title so, track. But we had to Boy kinda, Boy crazy, at the bro. time, we had to kind of do that. We had to do that to get the placement. You understand what I'm trying to tell yeah, you? Because yeah, you, you we take, didn't have take, any ends in the industry, yeah, yeah, and that yeah, was yeah, our yeah. end. So we agreed on co-production, but then other things. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's the past. That, that is what it is. But yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The Dipset Foot shit the door. was dip set shit was all us. 100%. But so Boy Boy was for me was one of my favorites, bro. On yeah, the that album, record, man. That record is hard. I'm a hook guy. I like getting chicken wings nah, and chilling. Yeah, but to this day, Boy Boy is still is a hard beat. What up, Boy Boy? Yo, that shit was Yo, that shit was crazy. Easy, bro. Mm, 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 mm. Say it again, bro. Card. It's it's finished. Yeah. yeah. There's another one. Um, in you see in the case. Uh, leave, yeah, leave it. Just carry with that. That's cool. So yeah, man. My my whole thing. My whole thing was like, yo. Um, when when I listened to when I listened to that, it kind of stood out to me. So I wasn't sure whether it was you guys or not. But then when you guys came on the later albums, it was right. quite clear that that was you. Yeah. yeah. Like I think anyone with a good ear for the beats, they'll yeah, know that yo, that's hundred percent the heat makers. You, you know what I mean? Difference. Like our music to this day, if you if you've been a fan of our music, if I play you shit today, you know it's me. Yeah, that's a fact. You know what I mean? It's a different type of energy. A lot of a lot of dudes that produce now, they produce and the shit is it's good. And I want to you know, ain't talking about nobody, but. Yeah, yeah. It's a certain level of energy that's lacking from a lot of music now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's and true. I don't necessarily mean hyper energy, like pray. I mean energy, like whether you feel the pain in the track, whether you feel whatever it is, Emotion. it's just energy that's missing from a lot of music now. And that's what I think needs to change. I don't give yeah. a fuck. I, I don't knock anybody's music, mm. but I want to feel your music. You know what I mean? I want to feel what you're saying to me. Sure, I want to. If you're talking about something, I want to. Be where you at. Mm. If you talking about the club, put me in the club when you rapping, so I can feel the everything that you're saying. You know what I'm saying? That's, but that's the difference between like the mean, the, like the, the real hip hop mean, the meaningful hip hop joints and the hits, but then the just the disposable ones. Because a lot of music's disposable, bro. Right. I know some of the, some of the shit rings off, but it only rings off for the month. Right. And then it's on to the next. Like these days, I feel I do feel like. I feel sorry for a lot of artists, bro, because they they might deliver an eighteen track album that they worked all year on, right? And after a month, people are done with it, bro. Yes, yeah, because first of all, we like in a single we like in a single driven industry now. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stream, totally. like you'll see an artist that come out, he got one hit record, and the album goes platinum. Not mm. because they cared about the other twelve records on the album. It's because they streamed that single so much it equaled up to a platinum sale of an album. I, it doesn't matter I, which I think, records you're I think French to. Montana is a good example of that recently. But see, with him, pop, to me, his popularity is big. It's big. Right. It's like he transcends rap yeah, at yeah, this yeah, point yeah, in his yeah, career. Yeah. So He's it's crossed like, over. Right. So you can't even you can't even equate what he does. It's kind of like even yeah, if, yeah, you're right. It might not even be the hip hop. Right. Ones. Let's just say he puts out a record that smashes, or he doesn't put out a record that smashes. He's still doing other shit and other places. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Whether you know what I mean, like so. I feel like the unforgettable, unforgettable joint though was is a good example of that because it's so huge right. on its own. Right. That that, that even, you you might accidentally find the album. But guess what? You know, what I'm not saying? a lot of other artists would have got that same response. 
Yeah, that's true. Because, like that's I true. said, yeah, trans, for he transcends too. rap. Like, his lifestyle and things that's happened in his life has been public, so it's kind of like... You link him with this chick You link him with that chick So yeah, that he's helps killing you some, He's killing these bitches that, that helps your popularity You know what I'm saying Especially when If you're a single dude And this is what you're doing It's like Why not It's not gonna hurt you yeah, You know not, what I'm saying So like And then on top of that You put it out makes a the, It makes the other bitches Like even more bro If anything Yeah I mean Interested yeah, in what's going on over here You know what I mean That's stuff for debate But yeah I guess <laughs> I guess I mean, I mean So that, that's how you met Dipset So you met Dipset Through a product uh, A beat placement guy who Wait, was He wasn't really a beat placement guy He um we had artists we were trying to get radio play for, and he did a oh, lot of radio work. So you just accidentally stumbled across each right, other. Right, right. That's dope. That's right. dope. And then I, I think for, off of the back of that, you kind of you kind of came on to, I guess, um, the Dipset album, Diplomat Community. Yeah, that CD that we gave him, nine out of the twenty beats was oh, on me. Okay. It was it was on Dipset. Okay. And, uh, uh, you find it, bro. Sorry, bro. It might be in the gold bag, you know. It might be in the gold bag, bro. Check it in there, man. So now nah, that's cool. We can edit that. So so basically, um, so night so off the CD it was supposed to be for Come Home with Me, originally. Or no, did it just uh, miss no. That? See, the ironic part is we already had the placements on Come Home with Me. Okay, so that's clear. That's yeah, done. but they didn't know that they thought oh, another producer did those beats. Shit. So when we met up, it was never like, yo, you the guys that did this, we need beats. It was just everything happened by accident. That's crazy. So you basically it was meant to be then, bro. right? Yeah, that shit it was had, meant to be. That's certified. I mean, I'm sure they appreciate that that, that happened too. Because that out, because yo, I mean, look, let's diplomatic community. Mm-hmm. I bought that shit on vinyl because I was a DJ, mm-hmm. so I had it on with records. It come with the big opening pack, like two hot, two, yeah. two sides, double disc. You got the deluxe edition. Is is diplomatic community mm-hmm. a rap, a hip hop rap classic? I would say yes. I do. I, I would so, say bro. yes because again, I ain't like, even saying that just because I'm here either. By the way, I genuinely. The reason why I say that is put that as a hip hop classic. Again, if we could talk about that record and you could put yourself in a certain place, time, or situation, it's a classic record. Like you know what I mean, like. That's what classic music does to you. Mm. It's like when a record comes on, impact. You, you remember something like, oh shit, I remember what chick I was talking to. I remember where I was at. I remember, you just remember certain parts of your life because that's what the music does to you. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel like, cla- like classic hip hop records, they have to be obviously great quality music. They have to make you remember where you was at, how you was feeling. Like they think about it, right? If somebody- Impact, you know what I'm saying? If somebody goes on fucking new edition, Can't Stand the Rain, I remember being a young kid like just a young kid watching cartoons and shit. I just remember shit like that because mm. that's where my, that's where I was at that time listening to that music. And yeah, I'll yeah, never yeah, forget yeah. that. We talking about years, years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, facts, facts. Come on, so man. Like, if you, still, classic. If, if you were to reel off the names of the joints on a Diplomatic Community album, do you remember the, do you remember the ones the, I did? Yeah, yeah, do you remember all of them? For the most part, I did, um, I did More Than Music. Classic. I did um, Santana the Great. Jeez. I did I'm Ready. Dipset anthem. Um, um, uh, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, was that on there? Was that on Joel's album? Look what you could do. Look what you was that on Dipset? Oh, that was That's on Dipset. Dipset. Yeah, it was on Dipset. Was, was that on Dipset? Was it right? Oh, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I never forget the records I did. Um, oh, um, uh, I love you. Mm-hmm. Um, which one? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I was waiting for that. Yo, you got him fucked him up. Who am I? <laughs> Um, Rumai might be one of yeah, the biggest mad ever, bro. I did 11, I'm forgetting mad records, hold on. <laughs> yeah, Wait, when he yeah never that's said, what I was talking about. When he never said who am I, I was, I was yeah, like, oh love, shit. I was talking about, yeah, my love, so I was right. My love, <laughs> I was at seven. Um, um, was that shit, Let's Get It On was on there, right? Yeah, Let's Get It On. Um, With the Marvin Gaye song. Yeah, the Marvin yeah, Gaye yeah, yeah. joint. Um, for my homies was on there? That was on Jewels. That was on Jewels, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that was on Come Home With Me. Yo. No, Come Home With Me. Uh, oh, yeah, DJ you. Enough Freestyle. That's, that's that was nine. the bonus, right? On the disc one. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That shit was hard, though. Yeah, hold on, that's, that's only nine. There's two more. What's the other two? You remember? <laughs> nah, do you remember the series? What about the Hell, the hell Rail phone call? Oh, yeah, the Hell Rail. Hey. This is what I do. <laughs> there was one more. What's the last one? You remember? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. And okay, okay. Hard. That's 11. Yo, 11. Yeah, you went in. You got it. You got it. You get it. Yeah, but that's that's impressive. Look, I got bro. like eight, man. We talking about 2000 and, 2002. We're not talking about 2002. That's some different shit. 2003. 2003. Yeah, 2003. 2017. Yeah, that's crazy. And, and let's not forget, bro, you've been working since then. Right. I Even got, for the people that I don't know, you've been going in. I've hundreds of records. Like, that's saying, like, because Dipset was obviously, like, a pinnacle. A huge moment in my career. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 I yeah. could never forget the records. I might, you know, for the time being, they might slip me, but. 
I don't remember them. It's crazy because I feel like that dip, obviously that dip set moment right there and then was it was a, a focal point of the career. Like you guys had, had managed to like be part of not let's not be not be part might be the wrong word. Yeah, definitely. Be is, part it, of, is it the right word? Do you think? Yeah, definitely. Be or part help of. mold that moment even because it was, part of it was it, very heavy. It wasn't like one like, placement. Think about it. I didn't get Cam's deal. I didn't get Joel's deal. Yeah, yeah. It was I didn't get the songs on the listen. radio. It's like different. I was just a piece of a puzzle. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I was a part of it. It's like I'll never take more credit than I'm supposed to get. Like without them giving me the platform, that music means nothing. For we real, don't have this real, interview today. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's that's real shit, bro. That's real shit. So I was a part. I was definitely a part. So the diplomatic community is a hip hop classic, bro. Mm-hmm. Imme- immediately, it's, it's epic. Even if it's not a classic, immediately, it's, it's epic. Immediately. And the crazy part is, I didn't realize how epic it was going to be while making it. No way. Cause, no, because you're making, you're doing record here, record there, record here, record. So you're hearing, it, you know, you got good records, yeah, and yeah. I know the record sounded good. But when you hear it all together, you kind of like, yo, I like this shit. Like, this shit flows good <laughs> together. This record sounds good after this record. The skits they put, everything just came together. So then you together. have to kind of big up the A&R as well in, in some ways. The A&Rs are the, pro- I mean, the executive which producer, Cam. which is killer. Cam, yeah. Cam Jewels, and Jim. You know I, what I mean? And they, I, feel, I feel like that's always been Cameron's thing, though. They was Playing together, own, fly shit. Yeah, they was their own team. Like, what you heard on the records really was them. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the fly, flashy talk, that was Dipset. That was yeah, them yeah. in and out of the studio. It was never no... No, no front. That wasn't made up shit. That was, that was them. What yeah. you heard on the record was them. Person I was telling me about some shit. They was in... What's that studio they was in? Hit Factory. Hit Factory. Yeah. Playing basketball in the studio. It was so big. Pulling out <laughs> basketballs and bu- putting fucking nets up and shit. Yeah, but see, they were just bringing the, from the hood remember, to the studio. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I think Hit Factory was more during Come Home With Me. Because during Diplomatic Community, we was only in Hit Factory, if I'm not mistaken, like two, that I remember. Yeah. yeah. Like two or three times. Most of the time we was in Sony Studios, okay. which is gone yeah, now, yeah, yeah. or Baseline. You know baseline. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But it, was from base, it went from Baseline to Sony. We did more of um, Purple Haze in, in Sony. So, so, all right, so come, come, um, come Home With Me, what happened? Two placements. Diplomatic Community, 11 mm-hmm. placements. Mm-hmm. That's my big up. And then straight from there, it went to Joel Joel Santana Santana from from me to you. Another beautiful hip hop album, bro. 12? Yeah. Jesus Christ, bro. Do you remember them? You're going to remember with them, bro. Hold on. You done one already. You said the homies. The champ is here. This is for my homies. One day I smile. Gee, that's a classic, bro. Why? Mary Sample. Post. No, Post was on the second album. Post was on the. Oh, yeah. um, uh, What's it, Mary? Down. Um, Going down. Um, the, uh, music? My love, the remix, my love with with Freeway, Squala, Squala, yeah, yeah, Squale. Jimmy. Yeah. Um, monster music. Yeah, monster music. The trumpets. God damn, it's, it's nine, it's jealousy. Three more. Not into jealousy. You didn't do jealousy. Charlemagne, my man. Matter of oh, fact, he did show, big show, big show, big man, show, big Charlemagne. Because that was um, that was beautiful. The jealousy yeah, that was beautiful, bro. Um, one day I smile and jealousy went, went together like That's nine They went together like Dude, fucking what else did I do? Oh you gotta look at shit up online Wings Hold on hustles, bro. Hold, hold on hold on hold on hold on Damn I can't remember that That's crazy it's bro It's three that I'm forgetting about And I know it's three that I Back again you, But the way jealousy and, oh, yeah, and one day I smile again. went together bro Back oh, again back, how back I feel that's, that's eleven There's one more And then it was Was um Was the Was the Was the a let's get it on remix or not? Yeah, it was. The remix was on Duels and the original was on the other. So let's, you're right. Let's get it on. Yeah, the remix. That's what I'm saying. Let's go. That was the. That was let's get it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was. You're right. It was. There a was remix. a remix on there, right? So then, I, so then I named one wrong record for Diplomatic Community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah said you did. You did. Community. So basically, one of them was on Diplomatic Community, and the other one was on the Purple remix. Purple Haze. How can I forget Purple? Purple Haze was on what? Diplomatic Community, right? Yeah, Diplomatic Community. But Purple didn't that shit Haze. end up on K Slay shit as well? Be like that, bro. That ended up on K Slay shit as well, bro. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, up. that's crazy. Nah, because, wait, wait, yo, getting into that, bro, this is, I'm going to tell you some real shit, bro. I remember, I was a DJ, right? So that's I'm That's a dig- good thing when you forget records. Yeah, it is. It's a moment, bro. Yeah. But I, I was I was digging out, um, like for mad CDs and shit, I was trying to get as many um, exclusive heat maker shit as I could. That's why I hollered at you, bro, because I was a fan, bro. I ended up looking for just the production, and if the dude rapped average on it, I'd be like, ah, that's cool, it's beautiful, though, you right, know what I mean? It's right. beautiful music. And I remember, um, obviously, everyone knows who K Slayer is, but I remember the K Slayer album, bro. Yeah, I did. You like, bring some different magic to that, too, bro. I did like what, four, I had a Scarface and Ghost Face. Go, the face Off. The face Off. I had a. Get Retarded? Did you do that? The Dipset and Twister joint? No, 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 I didn't do that. Huh? I did that Scarface and Ghost Face. Face Off was crazy, though, bro. I did, um, damn, yeah, man, like three records on there. You might have had more, I can't bro. Remember. <laughs> it might have been you might four. Have had more, you know. Yo, I my memory, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I, my memory's crazy when it comes to records I did. 
I'll be in interviews and forget records I'm working on now. <laughs> People are like, what you working on now? And I can only think of probably what I did in the last two days. Definitely like, Yo, smoking good weed then, 100%, bro. <laughs> nah, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, man. My, you know what I mean? Like, like I don't treat music like anything special in the sense of I don't hold on to any specific record and be like, yo, this is my favorite. I can only sell this to this artist. I just make music. Like. Is that advice you would give to the kids right now, though? The young yeah, producers what are you coming moving up? On to, like, certain producers I knew from when I was younger, but like, yo, I only this person giant. I'm selling this beat to is Jay-Z. It's like, You may okay. never meet him, bro. So how do you think you're going to get to Jay-Z without him hearing previous work? Yeah, you think yeah, he's just going to yeah, fuck yeah. with you because you are, one beat. You, you are who? Like, That's you understand? So to me, it's like, there's ways to do shit. It's like, even in the hood, when they, process, they, not to say, you know, I, I ain't trying to glorify this or anything, but it's like if somebody was selling crack back in the day, yeah. they gave the couple of first uh, away for free. Yeah, the test So it, people bro. get hooked on it and be like, all right, cool, I'm, I got it. That's what people do, bro. So it's the same thing with music. Even, music even the coke and that, they, let, they get them free the samples out the bar, The game is a new drug game, man. Yeah, bro. That's why I call yeah, my shit crack, crack music. Crack music, it's exactly. Same, that's what I was going to say. It's a new drug game. I was going to ask how it, how it came to that, but that's you've explained it in a nutshell, bro. Obviously, you're making And crack. think about it. What do, Getting the and, fiend and nobody hooked. ever thinks about this, but what do you sell when you sell music? What do you physically sell nowadays? Nothing. You sell air, nothing, yeah. sound. Yeah. Shit don't, you can't hold on to, you can't do nothing, right? So what kind of, we live in the biggest hustle ever. Mm. We hustling music, that shit is air, that shit is words, like. It's on the fucking file online People now. are becoming millionaires off of feelings. That's all that's this shit hard. is. That's hard, bro. No, but that's a fact. It's yeah, that's like, hard, though. If you, hard. nobody looks at it like that, it's like, no matter nah, what, I else, look it like that. what else, you, if you buy an iPhone, this shit costs you $750, $800, I got it in you my got hand. Physical product. I can see if I lose it, I know it's lost. Yeah, 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 yeah. With music, it's like. Anytime you want to go get that feeling, you go online and pay real quick. You might not know you're paying, but a stream is going to cost you. So you go online yeah, yeah, yeah. and stream real quick. Even if you pay a monthly bill, bro. You right. So pay, that's what I'm saying you. prepaid for it, in fact. So imagine what kind of... Even if you don't do it. It's really... Only, the only two industries that sell you feeling is, is the fucking music industry and the porn industry. It's the only two industries that sell you a feeling, and they probably the two biggest industries in the world. Even the drug game, you're getting a product still. Of course. But it's not, still for the feeling, the, I guess. But that's what I'm saying. Music is that drug without the product. Yeah. So imagine how ill that is. That, that's Mad. crazy. Like, but you guys came up in the product era, though, originally. No, of course. But even in the same you know sense, I mean? that's why you. That's why I agree with I mean, your comment before, about being you know, bigger with the internet. When I say like before, you could hold on to CDs and all that, of course. But the the CD is just the fucking. It's just the what's the word I'm looking for? It's just the fucking. Uh, it's just a caveat for the yeah, fucking. Yeah, they don't really. Every they all look the same. Just, right. But they all just, contain it's different right. shit. It's just it's just the, yeah, it's the yeah, shit yeah. that's on there that you're paying yeah, for. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's you could have like, burned the Diplomat album in here on a blank CD, and it would have been the same. Right. Point. It don't matter how yeah, I'm getting yeah, it as long as yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. want this product. If somebody would have told you we could put that shit on a nowadays, they could put it on a flash drive. I could download it to your phone. How are you gonna get it Straight to up. me? I'll, I'll pay this for it Just get it to me mm. You understand So it's like That's hard though. Once you look at music like that You understand that This is the biggest hustle In the world Huge You selling people shit That they don't really They can't take home Other than to listen to In some headphones So 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 the, From me to you Led into Jimmy right um, Or did it not my yeah, brother? yeah. Jim was because Jim from uh, on, during the on time my way to church. Yeah, from the time of me, um, we were doing me to you, Jim was securing his situation with um, Koch. I think Koch at the time. Koch. Yeah, Jimmy had it hard, I guess, because people didn't think he was a rapper originally, even yeah, though he turned out to be very popular. Yeah, because you know what you know, I mean, Jim was charismatic, man. Yeah. So and rhyme, his rhyming technique was a bit more unorthodox, and his ad libs were. It was were, real, like to be honest you know with you. Know what what you mean? Mean? People can say whatever they wanted to say, but Jim's rhyming style to me was like... It's him. It was Jim. If you know Jim, Jim rhymes like he talks. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? That's like, hard. That's it's hard. Just, it's real life. It's like whatever he's saying, that's how he would talk to you if he's mm. talking to you. It's really not... It's just him going in the, and staying on beat. That's all he's doing because he's talking to you. <laughs> on the, it's, it's the same conversation. You know what I'm saying? Did, did When Jim first started rapping, was that was staying on beat an issue for him or did he just come in nah, with that I mean, natural vibe? I just vibe? think Jim had a real laid-back flow, so it was kind of like... He got his he got his pocket together over the years because he felt like yeah, yeah, he, he came into his better. own. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's any artist. Jim was exciting though. That's any artist. But again, it's Jim's charisma that kind of makes Jim. Yeah, he was Jim. exciting. He was exciting. It's, it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? People wanted like, to know who he was. People love the music, but at the end of the day, it's like they just loved Jim. They yeah. loved his energy. They loved his character. Was crazy. Right. Yeah, 100. So, that's in what a good way. That's what put Jim over the top. On on that album, obviously, that's a whole a whole other thing. I mean, do you remember the joints you've done on there? Because I think you've probably done quite a few on that. If I'm I not did, mistaken, um, Jamaican joint. Jamaica, Jamaican joint was hard. I did um the re the record with um, Spanish end, joint? end of the road. End of the road. With right. Yo, wait, and, and Bambi. Yeah. I did end of the road. Do you know Do you know how many UK grime MCs rap, rapped on that? Did they? You know why? 
because it was double time. So, oh, yeah. uh, so UK UK music. See? Was, yeah, that was a trap bouncer for a trap. That was trap. Yo, that was trap. Ti was on it too. So I'm trying to tell he you, he was the the first really. Come on, man. Trap music. You know what I'm saying? Give my credit, man. Yo, so wait. On camera right now, Heat Makers may have made the first New York trap song. Listen, man. May have made the first. What, ever. what do you think Dipset was? Why do you think they love Dipset like that in other places? They were trapping, man. Yeah, they were trapping. It wasn't your typical. It wasn't boom bap. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, it wasn't boom bap. And no disrespect to boom bap. That's dope too. You know too. what I'm saying? Yeah, but it was too. it was a different type of energy, man. Like it was a different swing. It was a bunch of different shit, man. Like but the beauty of it is that once upon a time, boom bap was that. It was an original sound. Of it was course. someone new coming through, of cutting course. through. You know what I'm saying? Making and that, only, that and sound. And not light. too many people can make that sound. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like. It's a pocket. Right, like a lot of people can say whatever they want, but if Boom Bap really came into style today, a lot of producers would be out of business. Yeah, they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know how to attack that shit. Yeah, that's true, bro. So, so mm-hmm. the, the sampling thing was something that you guys was real heavy on. Definitely. The MPC going ham on that DVD, chopping it up, bro. You That DVD that's was a fucking moment, bro. Right, like, you tore the it. shit out of that. People still fucking talk people, to me about that DVD. People, people ripped that audio, looped it in the studio, and rolled to it, bro. Like, in London, bro. London people love Dipset more than G Unit, bro. I want more publishing. No, like G Unit pop, yeah, G nah, G Unit popping, and that that goes to show how big, yeah, Dipset had reached in London. Yeah, bro. At that time, it was Dipset and G Unit. Yeah, it Remember, was. They bro. was both putting out street mixtapes. They were the biggest. Yeah, the, 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 the street sweepers mixtapes and the K Slate yeah. mixtapes. Every all the mixtapes, bro. Definitely. Even the verses ones. Yeah, big shout to K Slate because around that time, K Slate he was, deserves more credit. K Slate was putting everybody on. Yeah, that's the fact. first person to play old uh, boy, uh, old boy was K Slate. You know what I'm saying? K Slate, so, bro. People say what they want, but Slay supported people from to this day. K Slay supported Nas against to this Jay Z and that beef. To this day, I still get support from K Slay. Like if yeah, I call yeah, Slay yeah. and ask him to play a record for whatever reason, which you know I don't, because I don't really have a lot of records I ask him to play. But if, if you, I if did, you do, it's, it's never a problem. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't say that about too many people. But yeah, Slay he kept is, it real. Because yeah, he was um he was like a big DJ for us. Obviously, Who's Flex. Slay? Yeah, Flex was big, but K Slay was the mixtape dude. Yeah, like we we had, so we used to put out like a mixtape a month or like a mixtape every two to three weeks. Yeah, yeah. So over in Shepherd's Bush, where like West London, I'm from West London. Over them sides, you had like this marketplace right. where it had the jewelers, it had the, the the global global sports that sold. You know the why Dips? Uh, you know why Dips was big in London? I think because reggae is big in London. Yeah, and just, we sampled yo, yo, a right. lot of we sampled a lot of reggae sound and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like with shatters for jewels. And dips it, and you, bro. And you bring sizzler, you know what I'm saying? So that's people, crazy, that's, bro. Yeah. Bro, this is this is the thing. Like my my family's over in, uh, they live in Flatbush, bro. Right. I've met I've met these guys through my years of coming to Flatbush every year, staying right. here for a long time, and being on the block with a man. Them, you know what I'm saying? Right. And we talk about the slang that London people use, bro. Like you might be damn near, you might be white, Asian, Russian, but if yeah. you live on if you live in the hood in London, because it's more mixed in London, right. you you might greet someone by saying Wagwan. Yeah. Wagwan, fam. You know what I'm saying? What's, what's good, what's good my G? You know Toronto, what I mean? Toronto took your whole swag. That's what happened, bro. <laughs> That's what happened. You, he, yo, he knows what he's talking about, bro. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. Why, you heard Drake's album, More Life, right? Yeah, you heard yeah. the UK rappers on it? Um, did I? I probably did. Two tracks with gigs and then a whole Skepta in the Oh, yeah, 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 I did, I did, I did. The, these these I guys, did. like, gigs is certified in London. And street Skepta, street Skepta's rapper. Skepta's big too, right? Skepta's huge. Skepta's in grime. Grime is right, so that's that comes back to the end of the road talk. This is why this is to give you a deeper understanding of why UK rappers chose that beat right. because there's a there's a there's rap, mm-hmm. but rap is American, right? So there was how U- did they get that beat? I never put out an instrumental. I spat on it, bro. I recorded over it and everything when I was how rapping, bro. I murdered that beat, bro. Two thousand and four, bro. I murdered that shit. On Pro Tools, real quick. This is crazy. I'm gonna send you that shit, bro. Yeah, send it to me. <laughs> I never knew there was an instrumental. Bro, I wanna hear the instrumental for that shit. It might be Luke then. Maybe they took four bars of the intro or something. Never, I know it. the records we put our instrumentals for. That one, Def Jam never even, unless they did their own shit, like Def Jam, you know what I'm saying? But Leaked it or something. I remember yeah, the ones yeah, yeah. that they cut instrumentals for. Because I, I was like, um, I was like to people that this beat, I don't know what BPM it was. I don't know if you remember. Um, Back then, because of the, the way I was timed, shit, that shit might have been like shit, like 68, 70, because okay. I didn't do it. I yeah, did yeah, it yeah, at yeah, the yeah. real time and made the drums double time. There you, you go. You know what I'm saying? So the Jamaican youths in London, all, the, all them man there is like, yo, this is way we can ride this shit. Because you know what happened? The grime is Skepta. Not that, like, he's yeah. one of the, the biggest people in grime. I'm grime is double time. Beat while you're talking to me, I'm thinking about that beat. <laughs> How the fuck did that beat go? That's double, grime is double time. So, most mm. grime is 140 mm. BPM. Mm. So, grime rappers be speaking like, What's popping G? Ain't no stopping me. I'm what they wanna be when man come through with a four, lick off the door. Man don't want it no more. They rap yeah. like that. So, when that beat dropped, people was like, 
rhyming because Buster Rhymes had Breaking Neck. Yeah. Then there was a couple other tracks, Twister tracks, but the end yeah. of the road shit. Like people was like, I yo, this shit. I'm keep real cold, around that time, I was just making music. I wasn't trying to make no double time shit. I just thought the sample sounded good at that speed, and mm. and I just made it. It was I wasn't thinking about no double time. They, no. That, they was loving that out there, bro. And I think that heat makers was actually actually had their own fan base at that stage in London. I should have been out in London, man. <laughs> bro, pe- pe- people don't realize how I like London is to here, bro. I still gotta go out. There's to a London mad difference time. in lingo, but other than that, but you're Jamaican, so yeah. even that, so yeah, the lingo you, to so your lingo you're at to home, me bro. is yeah, you're at when home. you when you yeah. say yeah. shit, it's Asian, you know what I'm saying? He's they at home. Like bro, instead London. of like Jamaican will say like you guys just say it with the accent like man, them and you know what I'm yeah. saying? But Jamaicans will say that, but it just will sound different with the Jamaican accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think I think like the Toronto the Toronto people are the second people. They're more proper. Yeah, they got it, but London's a bit more proper in my eyes. Like I remember watching like. Um, or even like the fam, I know fam is from over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's popping fam. Yeah, fam is our, fam is our thing, bro. We say we say fam a lot, you know what I mean? So that's Shut the up. thing. We'll mix like God, I was filming. Nah, that's cool, bro. It's nothing, bro. We, it's, that's all shit's about. This shit's the real shit, you know what I mean? The truth. But my my whole my whole thing is like um like the London the, the whole London thing had such an impact on Drake. Right. Because Drake, bro, Drake. I don't know if you know, but Drake's got gave verses to like kids in London, bro. Were like. 19 year old rapper called Dave bro he's just a YouTube guy Dave he, fe- he dr- apparently Drake said he fell asleep listening to some mix yeah. woke up and he could just remember it cause he, he did a verse to and it and he was like holidaying bro I wanna be on your shit you know what I mean like French Montana just laid a, a verse for another girl called Steph London they just dropped but you know there's people trying to plant their seeds overseas to kinda that's also a good you know, strategy and, yeah it's a, it's a two way thing it's not just one way nobody's you know doing nothing just to be kind now what we were saying at the start it's not a freebie bro everything gotta fucking everything has to make sense yeah it's either gonna make sense or sense, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For real, because but you, at, the, at the end of the day, it's gonna make sense. <laughs> like it has to make sense now in order to make <laughs> sense. sense and dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the outcome you know might be saying? that. I'm, at the end that, of the day, nobody's really doing anything unless they're just well off. Nobody's doing anything with no, with no hope of any type of, you know what I'm saying? It's Drake, reciprocation. Drake, Drake like, might be well off at this point. Might be no, 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 I'm, I'm sure, but my thing is this. He knows his star power, and he knows he what well. he can do for an artist if he jumps on a record. Nobody g- is giving somebody that alley-oop without something in return. He he posted on Instagram, like um, like a snip, a snip of a DVD, a right. London DVD, like the London version of Smack called Lord of the Mics. Right. Where people battle, you know, like the Smack shit. Right. They battle, but they're grime. Right. And he posted like his favorite battles and shit, and it's and I'm, we're talking about a really yeah, old but DVD. He, but bro. he does that with URL too. Like yeah, he'll see? say like he likes this battle rapper, he likes that battle. So rapper. he's on YouTube heavy basically. Yeah, of course. Bro. Finding new shit. Of course, and he and, and, and he knows sick. how people gonna feel if, if if he mentions their name one time and they like, oh shit, yeah, Drake, I'm on Drake radar. The, I mean, he got the, he got the tattoo of Skepta's crew on his arm. Where? Yeah, bro, from London. BBK, bro. Where better know? He got that on his arm, bro. He come out he come out to two Skepta shows in London unannounced. I think I've seen one of them. Yeah, bro, he's, he's doing his thing. But the gigs verse off of the, off of the Drake joint, I've seen people like Joe Budden talk about it on um, Everyday, Com- uh, Everyday Struggle, yeah. but he's saying like, oh yeah, I, 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 I take that out of my playlist. I don't really want to hear that shit. But then there's a YouTube clip that academics put up mm-hmm. of gigs performing that in London, mm-hmm. and you, you literally can't even hear him, bro. Yeah. The crowd and like every person's rocking and up to it. You know that it's like when Jay Z. Then when Jay Z did that Pun, uh, thing, that Punjab record. Yeah, that's, that was some UK guys as well. Again, you, everybody was like, why is Jay-Z doing it? They didn't understand that he's doing that shit because that record was probably one of the biggest records before he even the whole got India on it. Yeah, so he knew, yeah, yeah. if I do that, I'll open up a whole other fan market. base. So yeah, yeah, you're right, bro. Everything but I've not, since we've been sitting down, because we was here for maybe 40 minutes setting up, and I was listening to you talk about you know your, your, the moves and the, your understanding mm-hmm. amongst all of us, and I feel like you're a bit of a deeper guy, bro. Like You right. see things for... What it really is, rather than what it might be. That might be that might be too deep sometimes. Fuck yeah. myself up. Okay. Nah, but I saw it though. I see. Yeah. I see you make certain comments about things. Obviously, not to bring it back up, but right. you you said certain comments that made me understand that even when another person like might even have been me or him, we might have thought something else. You right. said something else, right. and then that that may we may be wrong. I mean, I'm saying? none of us are right. Some of us might be closer to the truth, but none of us are really right. We don't know, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially closer when it comes. Like I said, that's a good way to put it. When we talk about music, we're not talking about nothing tangible. So how can any of us be right or wrong if we just talking about feelings? Yeah, you're right. Going back to nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Somebody says, "Yo, I can, 
I can make a hit. They're lying to you. Nobody knows how to make a hit. If we did, if somebody knew how to make a hit every time out, yeah. they would be the wealthiest the dude on this planet, the wealthiest chick on this planet. Some people are more popular than others, don't get me wrong, yeah, yeah, and they have yeah, a higher percentage of making yeah, hits. Yeah, 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 yeah. But nobody knows the short proof way of making a hit every time out. You That's know what real, I mean? Bro. It's like, with that, you would be the fucking puppet master. If you could control somebody's <laughs> feelings to the point where everything you put out is a smash. Is that the DJ? You would not? be God. Because DJs can't even do that no more. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. you, if you could do that, you would be God. That's what God does. Yeah. God can change your feeling at any given moment. Or whatever God so you believe th- so in. So your opinion on a hit record is that it's natural. It just happens. It's organic. Yeah, I think most of the hit records, if you ask a lot of people behind hit records, yeah. none of them were purposely made. And when I say purposely, purposely made, I mean like whatever you intended it to be from the beginning is not what it turned out to be at the end. Okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? It's like nobody told you they envisioned this hit record like this from the beginning. Nobody like you told said, you that. You said it yourself when you were working on Diplomat Community, the beats, you didn't really think it was going to be that big. Right. It's what, even when I did Dips and Anthem, I didn't think Dips and Anthem was going to be the biggest record of my career. I never knew yeah. that. Like, is that, is that the biggest of your career? As far as notoriety, yes. Okay. As far as okay. No, not sales wise, but notoriety, yes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What's what's the biggest sales wise? If you don't mind me asking. Um, biggest sales wise, uh, might be Wayne. Look, oh. The Carter Two. Oh, how can I forget that, bro? Yeah, the Carter Two. How many joints you have on that? Two. Did the mob and we did receipt. Gotta hold on. Yeah. Hold on to my receipt. And the mob was the first record on that. So album. that that album was big in London too, bro. Yeah. Um, and you know what? And at that after time, the Carter Three, that album did more. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. remember, the Carter Three was huge. So when the Carter Three came out, people went back and started buying the Carter Two. It's crazy. It's crazy though because Carter Two was the best to me. Carter Two was Lil Wayne. I can't Lil say Wayne's that because I was, I was on that. If I say it, I seem biased because I wasn't on the Carter Three. You still got an opinion one. though. So, I mean, I definitely think the Carter Two was the best. There you go. Just because it was almost like the Wayne that you want to hear. Like, it was almost like mixtape Wayne before yeah. we knew mixtape yeah, Wayne. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? That's what it was. That, that yeah. was Wayne get in pocket, man. Yeah, like to the, the max. Even the way that the mob opens up. Cash money, young money, money motherfucker uh, on the side. Niggas, you know what I'm Jeez. saying? Like, you just went into and the, the game. Wrote, yo. That that there that that's crazy because obviously Joel Santana and Lil Wayne had a had a relationship. Yeah, and then the when you heard was working on, I had a, I had a couple records on that album and never made it out. How they sound? I never heard them. Oh shit! I just know they were done. You never even heard them never yourself. Never heard them. But the beats were crazy. Yeah, of course. Mad. Of course. Of course. Because Wayne, when Wayne when Wayne dropped the bars on your thing, yeah. that was a whole different thing for me, bro. Like, I was just like, yeah. yo, this shit is. He went crazy. To hear Wayne on Heat Makers was special. He, he went crazy. And he used to like Harlem as well, you could tell. He yeah, had Wayne a few, was around yeah, different he had a few, for a minute. Yeah, yeah, he had, he had that a song few. with Cam, I think Touch It or Not. Was it Touch It yeah, or Not? Yeah, he had another yeah, one, the Bird Call first, though. Yeah, Bird Call. Yeah, right, where they shot yeah. a video in Harlem. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's true. I, I mean, Harlem's an influential place. Uptown, you from the Bronx, right? Yeah. What part Bronx. of the Bronx you, you stem from? I'm from Northeast Bronx, like near yeah. Boston Road, Gun Hill Road, where they meet around that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's kind of close to Harlem anyway, man. In its own sense. I mean, you know, people who say it's worlds apart. People really? from, from people from the Bronx who say it's worlds apart. People from Hell, Hell Row used to fuck me up, man. It used to be like I, I, I didn't Hell understand. Rose from the Bronx. Yeah, he was. Hell Row is from the same area that that Fred is from. Hell Row and Fred actually grew up in the same neighborhood. That's what I know is from listening to their content. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when he says Fred, he's talking about Fred the Godson, and that's yeah, and, that, and I was gonna get there, bro. I mean, we go straight in. I don't give a fuck. But Fred the Godson is someone for me that is very underrated lyrically. Super underrated. Like his metaphor game. Fred is and one of the on best. Tundras, people might say whatever they want to say lines. about me. Fred is one of the best to do it. People I think could, so. People could. Let me tell you something. I've listened to a bunch of rappers, people that are nice. I'm not talking about your average rapper. I'm talking about rappers that have been rapping for years and certified hip hop rap and legends kind of thing. Th- right. And the yeah. way Fred works and the way he writes, the time he writes in, the shit that he says, the, he he doesn't waste a bar. You yeah, understand? Yeah, like yeah. And that's rare with a lot of rappers. A lot of rappers bro. will waste a line to get to this line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Every line with might him even freestyle is like, a couple lines. Right. Shit. Every line with him is potent, and I haven't I haven't met too many dudes that can do that. He says shit that goes over your head twice. Way over your head. Maybe twice. You might you might not get it for two years. He said, "Yo, Fred said a line. I recorded him." I didn't get the line until I listened to Gordo back like when two he was times. Mixing it. Yeah, not not even mixing oh, when it was shit. out already. I was listening to the shit like, oh, that's what he meant. <laughs> I said, oh, that dude was crazy, man. How the fuck he slipped that shit by me like 17 times? Do you remember it? Do you remember the bar? I think he said, um, what he said? Because I know there's so many. He said some shit like you. He said some shit like, because I think the song was basically about like if somebody was owning them bread. So he said something like, you go from debt to being silent. Cause in debt to be is silent. He, s- he said, um, the, yeah, like that. I that already, line, I'm like, already, oh, he said you go from debt to being silent. In debt to be is silent. I'm like, 
course he is. Yeah, he's a savage, bro. Yeah, like, how the fuck? Then he lined it up with some other crazy shit out. Like, his bars just go back. So that's why they go over my head sometimes, because his shit is back to back to back. They don't give you a chance to digest the first. you know what's mad about metaphor rappers? You had a stage where you had, like, Cassidy, Papoose, Lloyd Banks, Fabulous. You had a lot of them doing the mixtapes and putting right. mad lines in. Right. But honestly, hands up, I love all of them. Mm-hmm. I love all of them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that they could talk to my guy on that. Fred is different, Because man. you know why? They, they've got like four, like you say four bars and then a punchline or something he had a punchline mixed in with another one in one line here's still. a line that like Garrett, meant two things, bro. Appreciate. Fred so said in the, Fred said in the song I need that green bay I wanna know how that Lambo feel green bay <laughs> I need that green bay I wanna know how that Lambo feel you know I didn't green, even get green bay plays in Lambo feel yeah so he's saying like you know over here people call their chicks bay he said yeah, I need bae, that I need that, every, yeah, over, I need yeah. that green bay Money, I need that green he bay. Put, he put I three words into one. No, but not even that. He made two things. Either way you take it, it means the yeah, same. You mean know what I'm saying? Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's, that's to me, that's cr- like he said another line. I shot that man in a restaurant. I left him a fossil, the whole dinosaur. Hey, fossil. Like his wordplay is retarded to me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Man, that's crazy. A dinosaur's the restaurant in Harlem. Get some shit. I rap yeah, in. Yeah, I rap yeah, in a yeah, shack yeah, jersey. Yeah. I'm self centered. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck say shit like that? <laughs> Yeah, he's, on, he, for me, he's probably the punchline king, bro. In he all is, honesty. hands down. I know, I know Lloyd Banks is, is definitely up there, you know what I mean? I, listen, I give respect to everybody, yeah. but, but I he's got too many, Fred bro. All the time, he's got too many. If Fred was to ever choose to battle rap, a lot of these dudes better pack their shit. Win, bro. Let me tell Every you something. Nobody's fucking with that man. When If you let him sit down for two months and write for one person, crazy. I know what Fred does in 15 minutes. If you let uh, him write for one person, it might, stand, it might be a rap. They don't stand a fucking chance. Nobody excluded. Literally. Niggas can say whatever they want. Yo, you bu- I'm not bugging. Nobody You've been there excluded. seen that, bro. You've seen that shit, so you know better. I mean, that's the thing. I think, like, his his project... I'll be honest with you. Your your production dragged me to him. That's beautiful. Amazing. How you that, that's, perfect. that's perfect. That's perfect. Don't be real with you. That's I, how I I've ran heard, into it. I've heard Fred say shit... Three and a half years ago, that battle rappers are just saying now. They probably got it from him, Of bro. course. They probably waited for it to not be new. Do you know the shit that Fred said to me? And I'd be like, yo, how the fuck did you think of that? And then I, he'll spit <laughs> it on a song, and then a couple months later, I hear a battle rap dude saying, I'm like, but he was twisted around in a different way. In a way. different way, like, like one word different. You can't tell me you don't listen to Fred. So instead of saying Fred, Fred he might say loaf, but he said the same bar. Yeah, I know you're talking about, man. bro. Fred, I know, I see it. I've seen it happen before. Fred with other eyes. It's crazy because he, he... Fred is a beast. Man. Yeah, he is, bro. And, I, and you, you drawed me to him, Heat Makers. So when I came to him, I was just like... Yo, and man, did you understand what he was like, his med Like, when you first yeah, yeah, listened yeah, to him... Yeah, yeah, because I'm a rap. I used to rap. Well, I rap, rap still now. I ain't going to lie to you. I rap, but I'm kind of like at the stage where I just do it because I so, love it. So you can appreciate when you're yeah, here for a rap bar. I rap, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say fucking, like, I've got a, a, a mad rap career, but I'm an underground rapper, bro. That's dope. I've definitely got videos with 200,000 views, you know what I'm saying? I've done my thing. Oh, so you're doing your yeah, yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing my thing. Yeah, I'm doing my thing. More I've been, than I've been, just, yeah, 20,000 yeah, 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 views, yeah, yeah. you're doing your thing. I've done my thing. I've been played a part in, like, platforms in the UK that are big now, like SBTV. I was there early, early. They're like the That's world dope. star. Of, of so England, this, you, you know? just, uh, you just started this. The podcast we've been doing for a year, man. We done did like Black Child and Casa, um, fucking Big Twin from Infamous Mob, um, SAS. Oh yeah. Done SAS. We done U- a lot of UK rappers that you won't be aware of, but they they doing their thing. That's still dope. Yeah, it's going, it's growing, bro, and and it's getting a lot of traction. It's almost like there's space for it in England, in the UK. You know yeah, what I'm saying? There's always space for nostalgic music man yeah exactly I mean I, I, meet, I, I mean, I started out as a DJ I was garbage at DJing bro <laughs> I, was, I was terrible bro that's how I started was but DJing. I bought all the vinyls I got mad I was telling him I got mad vinyls I don't lie to you I was nice he was nice with it I yeah, mean, but that I makes sense busy, but that I, was, makes sense. I was nice like, you I need was, to count the I used to, to do produce. like producer I mean producer I used to do DJ battles and shit like all the shit we see niggas go behind their back and I used to do all that shit <laughs> until one battle I'll never forget. Well, you got birth. There's a nigga by the name of S1. He, I think he was, I think he was DMX's DJ. Oh. <clears throat> to my LS1. LS1. Hey. LS1. Hey. LS1. Hey. LS1. We had a DJ. We had a, we had a DJ battle, and I'll never forget this shit because I've never been shamed like this before in my life. I had a DJ battle in Howard. You know, I went to Howard. We had a DJ battle in Howard University. So now ba- I'm thinking I'm nice. I'm like, I know ain't nobody else in this competition gonna be able to do this shit. I'm thinking it's just niggas from the school that's gonna be in this shit. Mm-hmm. I see this nigga pull up. This nigga, and I remember watching him on like DVDs. I'm like, nah. Recognize him. Who do I gotta battle first round? This nigga. Oh <laughs> shit. I remember exactly what he did, nigga. This nigga had on um, some KRS One records. It was like, I think KRS One was saying something like. Was saying something like "Kiss my black ass," "Kiss me," whatever song it was. Scratch it in. 
This nigga was doing this shit, but while he's doing it, niggas unbuckling his pants. Oh, kiss my shit. black ass, kiss my <laughs> And then sat on the turntable with his bare ass and got up in the shit said, kiss my black. And he walked off. Oh, nigga, while he's saying that, I'm just packing my records. And I'm like, yo, get the fuck up out of here, man. He violated Violated me. That was my that was my DJ battle career all over in one night. Go did you did you go huh? against him? Go yeah, I went against him. I went first. Yeah. I was doing that. I, I was doing that. Um, you know what? You who smoked me too? I don't know if Steph Love remember she was one of the judges. No way. I did that shit. Um, remember the shit Jazzy Jeff did? I want to rock right now, but I had two records. Hey, I hey, wanna, and I was breaking the shit down. Oh, so I wanna gaps. rock right, uh, wanna rock right, uh, and I was fucking it up. When I finished, Steph Love was like. Yeah, that was cool. Jazzy Jeff did that already, so I uh, gotta deduct points for that. And I was just like, then this nigga comes up. This his shit sounded louder than mine and all that. Two shoes came <laughs> on. He came on. Kiss my black. Kiss my. Going around. Yo, this nigga. It was a sat, win. It was a win. On, so when he, I knew what he was doing already. But the minute I seen him on buckles, I said, "Oh, this nigga's about to do some stupid crazy shit." Crazy shit. Nigga sat on the turntable with his bare ass and got up and the shit played perfectly. Kiss my black ass. Yeah. Nigga, uh, stop uh, <laughs> Walked off. <on. laughs> I'm out of here, man. Yeah, he was a true savage, bro. I ain't winning this round. <laughs> That's like, like me, my, uh, my shit was never that deep, bro. I was more of like someone just to mix on beat, chop it in, drop it in, little yeah. scratch drop. I was more of like, in the. I just loved the music. You know what what years was this? Um, I'd say 1990... Oh, yeah, so you was... 1998. Was That's when you really had to DJ. Yeah. So I tried, around, I tried, I tried. No, I couldn't get my head around. That's when you was walking around with six, seven crates to but a party. Two, but the early 2000s, um, I, I done well in, in kind of like just... DJing in clubs and dropping tracks in. That's when it was changing. Yeah, That's yeah, when music yeah. changed. That's when music wasn't about. That's when. Think about mixtapes even changed around that time. Things up. started to become digital. Yeah, you know see, what I'm saying? Well, I was buying vinyl still. You know what I'm saying? No, so, that, but that yeah, was like the, the transitional year. That was like vinyl to to CDJs to Serato. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you yeah, was part yeah, of that yeah, yeah. period where DJ might walk in with anything. Yeah, Records. Facts. That's a fact. He might walk in with a fucking. He might have been Crates. in some new age shit yeah, and yeah, had yeah. The, the Serato shit. Yeah, but yeah, not too yeah, many yeah, niggas. Not had too many that. had it at that point, bro. Yeah. And the thing is, at that point, like it, it, it was like I'd say, hey, my, hey, not hey, my old oh boy. Old boy and Noriega, nothing. You could mix the yeah. joints together easy because they had the oh, oh and yeah, the, yeah, 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 cut, yeah, like, yeah, cut yeah, in. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and them yeah. shits was shit set the club alight, bro. You just go from one to the other. You didn't really have to do much, and everyone would be losing their mind, bro. Music was different, man. But it's, it's, crazy, it's gonna come back around to that type of feel. The music only stays one way for a certain amount of time. I mean, I mean, you said you said like no one really knows when they're making a hit record, but maybe there's a couple if they're like R and B singers. No, and don't, don't up, get me wrong. You know the. Can you feel it on the, on the You know the feel. You know when you make a record that's better than any other record you've ever made or mm -hmm. in that category. You know that feeling. Any artist that has made a big record, you know when you've made a big record. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether it sells or not, or whether it goes thing. as far as you think it will, you know when you made something yeah, yeah, special. Yeah, yeah. So you don't you know actually know until it's sold, the but different, you get the, the difference idea. is... People don't believe in their records long enough nowadays for it to win. Back in the day, yes. niggas, niggas ran with a record for a yes, year and a yes, half, yes, two yes, years. Yes, yes. Kaya was working my neck, my back for years. You know what's funny? I, I'll, say, I'll say that to someone. Like, you, you still hear Bobby Schmurder's record on every day on Hot 97, bro. Up to now. Listen, so if it never popped the first year, you still could have made it what I'm two telling years you later. Too, you know what was saying? the difference with that record? It was a feeling. The first time I saw that record, I said, yo, I don't know this nigga from nowhere. But he's hard. He's <laughs> going, for some reason, I believe him and I believe he's going to win. Mm. I didn't know him from nothing. I just watched it. As a matter of fact, I caught the video at 15,000 views, 20,000 views. Early. That's early, man. Next to every time I'm looking, that shit is jumping up 50,000. Jumping up by 20 and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, to the what? point that he was at 14, 15 million, and I'm like. Do you know why I noticed that? Because that's the that's where my cousin's from, that block. Okay. That's where I stay. So okay. I've been knowing So you knew them? I've been knowing for years, man. Like, I used to smoke a spliff with Rowdy in the morning, and that, you know what I mean? Dope. Rowdy, but, Rowdy's a different character. Rowdy's that hard, nigga, fam. He's that hard. nigga's hyper when he came. Oh, bro, he's hard, dude, bro. Though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been knowing them. Like, I've been knowing a lot of these the GSC guys and whatnot for years, man. Just, and they're good people over there. But uh, there was a time when I shot a music video. The video that I was talking about with the 200,000 views, yeah. I shot that on the 90s with like a couple GSC members in the video we shot it there we, we, we had a clip with like Bobby in the video but it was a bit blurry so the editor was like yeah I'm just going to cut that bit out and delete it and then a year later yeah change the game Bobby become that clip the guy the nigga searching for so that my, clip. my guy from London sent me the, the link to that hot, the hot nigga video like yo Nah, he's that's your here. boys in the video That's your guy <laughs> You know what I'm saying That's your dude in the video And that shit I was like Yo bro That says 260,000 views In one in like two days 
the fuck? He said, that's a hit, bro. You know what I mean? That's a hit record right there. And, and it's mad because I never even remember yeah, the way record was probably made. Probably made in some basement niggas just talking about Yeah, that's a shit. fact, bro. And the shit becomes a smash. And it was Vine that took it off. Meanwhile, well. somebody else in a multi-million dollar studio working for weeks and can't come up with shit. <laughs> so at the end of the day, like, who could tell you they know how to make a hit? They're lying to you. If so, people knew how to make hits, there wouldn't be dudes in their basement coming out with better shit than people in multi-million dollar studios. Yeah, that's true, bro. There it's is a no feeling. Form. You're no right. It's a feeling. To this shit. So, so the, the the going back to the albums, Jim Jones' album dropped. Mm -hmm. That that was like a, a, a great independent album. Yeah. People accepted Jim Jones now as a rapper. Right. But then I feel like after that, um, Heatmakers was probably part of the movement moves on Dipset, the diplomat, the 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 Ju Ju the God joints. Oh, uh, yeah. We the did, movement yeah, moves we on. Did, we did a couple records on there. I think. Like again, I don't no know days off. Was that you guys? I don't know. You don't remember? I don't remember what you mean. I don't remember. Like a lot of the Duke stuff and um Hell Raw. Jail right out. Yeah, Jail Right, I, I, yeah, right, I, I think I did two joints for I think, if I'm not mistaken. I don't really remember Do You know what's funny though, Jail Right had a sound as well. And then people in London took to that too. The I, beats. Yeah. yeah I can't know. remember who the produ what the producer's name was though. Um But there was a sound that he had where it was like Yeah, I forgot his his man's name. I forgot he had a studio down in the city, I don't remember his name, but it was somebody who used to always get work the beats with. From yeah, him. yeah, yeah. I don't remember his name. They had though. that track like the pit and shit like that. But beats. um London London was freestyling over them as well. Again, I don't think because of the lack of social media, I don't think it reached as well. I don't think anybody really understood the type of buzz they had in other places. You know what I'm saying? Like obviously yeah, 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 yeah. Cam and Jim and Jewels because they traveled a lot, but I didn't understand the buzz I had in London, the buzz I had in Asia, the, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I was, I was upset that, um, I'll be honest, I was really upset, bro, that Dipset had issues in London. They had some issues over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. And it's, pre it's prevented them from ever really coming to London, bro. I'll be honest with you. There was a show where they sold it out, I bought a ticket and everything, and they never they never came. And obviously, no one knows the truth on what really happened, but the guys that, yeah, that, that had put the money up, obviously, the street guys. Stories, but yeah. I but I can't wait to come to London. London. You should come, bro. I'm good. Dude, even if it's like a, we, I need to hook you up with the big promoters, bro. The club promoters, so you could do a heat maker set. Listen, man, let's do a heat makers. Heat makers classic heat set, bro. Heat makers, and you pick your own producer battle. Whoever you want to pick, just make sure that. That's the, a fact, bro. Just make sure the pounds is right. All right, so let's let's try and set that up, bro. I'm gonna make I'm gonna put my all into that though, cause I know the right, I know some right people over there. We're gonna listen, make this shit happen, bro. Listen. Talk to me. Talk to me, boy. <laughs> put that together. First of all. You gotta have no type of care for the other person. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really stand a chance if we say if I catch a buddy. Mike, Mike. <laughs> it's, guaranteed. it's guaranteed. That's not. It's guaranteed. Now anyone that saw that Smack DVD, I think they know that though. I think yeah. they might be and scared, bro. Go online and go online and check out my celebrity beat battle. Did you not do the um, with other with other producers in there? Shout out to everybody, but they gave the trophy to one person. Who? Come on, man. Hey. <laughs> no bragging, but you've been listening to my music. Nah, for years. I know that, like, bro. Nah, real talk. Real talk. I work hard, man. Like, nah, you don't, anything bro. Anything that I could do on that machine, that's thousands of hours put into that shit. That's not me just waking up knowing how to do that. Like, that's me doing that shit day in day that's, out. Yeah, that's for real years. craft, craft. Yeah, it's real so craft. When I say what I say, it's never to be cocky nah, and arrogant. Nah, it's nah, like, nah, I don't nah, nah, think nah, nah. we wouldn't want you any other way. If you put me on that stage with any other producer and we playing original, you planning to burn them, bro? They don't stand a chance. I know bro. that's what I'm doing. Did you um? Did, did, did the heat makers consist of of more than yourself? Yeah, it was uh, me and my man Thriller. But Thriller, um, yeah, Thriller's still my man. He just, yeah. um, you know, he's just doing other things with life now. But did did he play like a key part in the Eleven Joints on the Dipset album? Um, to be honest with you, I did nine. He did two. Two. Okay, yeah. so big him up still. Yeah, no, yeah that's but my it's brother, good that people know. Big that's up Thriller. Brother. You know that's what I mean? Forever. Sometimes it's good just to let people know the facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's my brother forever. So I mean, anytime somebody mention heat makers, it's always gonna be me and Thriller. Whether yeah. you never make another beat again because is he, we, reti we, is he retired? Or? We, I mean, I, I never say retire. I'm sure somebody <laughs> pop up, he pop the fuck back up like a genius. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so. Yeah, like without him, like we built this from nothing together. So Scratch. it's always gonna be yeah, just me yeah, and him, my, my cousin, my cousin uh, weatherman. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, 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 yeah. it's always gonna be us. So then from there, um, I mean, you real deal, my cousin, you real deal. Do you know? Do you know what? It's just I'm drinking henny, bro, and I just thought of some shit. You know when? Um, you now real talk. It just made me think about it. I never even thought about this till now because I mentioned Papoose on mm -hmm. about the in the metaphor section. Mm -hmm. You had a joint with Papoose, bro. I did. I did four records on the Nasarima Dream. The, the body album. bluffing. 
Yeah, we did Buddy um, Bluffing. Did no, um, but there was one. I can't remember the name of it. But as soon as you say the name, this shit was my joint. I didn't stop playing this shit for years, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it was. It just felt the passion. The sample was like. Ooh, but yeah, but I think it might have. Wasn't it was it Nasarima Dream? No, that never dropped. Was that until no, later? No, was that the name of the? Yeah, he. Put, oh, you mean during those? It times. was mixtapes. It was mixtapes. He said something about um about being about being deaf, but he's like the only deaf I know is when when brothers can't hear. I don't know. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, I have no fucking. Yo, clue. but that's gonna, gonna, that's gonna upset me, man. I'm I can't worst, think of that shit. I'm the worst producer of memory ever when it comes Cause to like. Because you're licking out the hits, bro, and on to the I don't next. try to remember records. I just try to make new shit. Like, I don't know. Oh, uh, bro, shit. this is gonna. This is gonna